Hey everyone, it's Abby. I wanted to make a late Victorian wrapper or tea gown to bring with me to the Welsh weekend at Trevor Hall that I attended. So I did some research and I got a great poly green velvet to create the wrapper with. I wanted something with a train and some drama, a la Crimson Peak. So I found a great tea gown pattern in the Voice of Fashion book that would be great to modify and got started. So let's get sewing. I found a pattern for a ladies tea gown in the Voice of Fashion. It will take a bit of modification, but it will work for what I want. Off camera, I drafted the pattern from the book using the system. It ended up rather too long, which is unusual for me, but I get it to work just fine. Using my drafted pattern, I started with laying out the bodice pieces on doubled green cotton to create a mock-up that will also become the lining. I pinned and cut out the lining pieces. I pin the mock-up together. I sewed up the cotton mock-up off camera and try it on. It fits a little small because I hadn't understood how the seam allowances worked on the pattern, and there are barely any instructions. I'll fix it when I cut the main fabric. Off camera, I seam ripped the mock-up and re-sewed it with less seam allowance. It fits more how I wanted it to, so I'm going to call that good. I tried laying out my doubled velvet fabric on my craft room floor. The pattern is rather too big for the space because of the bodice piece being added on. I used my hallway and laid out all the pieces. I was worried I wasn't going to have enough fabric even though I got six meters, but it turned out I have more than enough, which means I can make the large puffed sleeves that I wanted. I cut out the pinned pattern pieces adding seam allowance where I need to.
The back piece has the extra width because I will be adding pleats to the back of the gown for more fullness. I had a piece of the longest pattern piece that went off the edge, so here I'm piecing in an extra corner. All of my velvet nap is going in the same direction, I made sure to check. I'm using the drafted pattern sleeves along with another puffed sleeve pattern to create an elbow length puffed sleeve. I fold the sleeve piece up and pin to doubled cotton to create my puffed sleeve lining. I cut out my sleeve lining. I want to add pockets, so I lay my pocket pattern on doubled velvet, pin, and cut out the pieces. I have my puffed sleeve pattern piece, which I want to make longer. I fold it in the middle to fit on my doubled velvet, and I use my shirtwaist sleeve pattern to get the length right. I pin and cut out the puffed sleeve pieces. I pin and sew the piecing onto the skirt piece. I pin and baste the bodice lining onto each piece. You can see I have extra seam allowance. I pinned the body of the gown up and machine sew the seams starting with the shoulder. I machine sew the bodice and skirt seams in one long line. I machine sew the back bodice and skirt seam separately.
I machine sew the side seams with the pockets. I press all my seams open. Pressing poly velvet works just fine either from the inside or with a press cloth. I'm not using a press cloth here as these are the inside seams so if they get messed up a bit it doesn't matter. I press my bodice and back seams. I cut and turn under my raw edges and hand sew them in place to finish my seams. I measure and cut the hem of my gown after figuring out how long I wanted it to be. I wanted to add a design to the edge of my gown along the front. I found a Celtic knot pattern that would work on Pinterest and get started pinning with my lime green soutache braid. I hand sew the pinned soutache braid with matching lime thread. It got easier to pin as I went along. I measured and placed pins so that I would have the same size every time, or at least close.
I did all of this by hand, but I've seen people use the machine for this kind of thing too. I cut the back of the collar to fit my neck a bit better. I sewed the Sutash Celtic knotwork all the way around and had it meet at the back of the neck. I wanted to add a facing to the bottom of the skirt hem. I measured and cut this from the doubled green cotton. I wanted to add a velvet facing along the whole inside front, so I measured and cut 4 inch strips that I will be adding to the inside of my gown. I cut the curved neck facing piece too.
I pin and machine sew the velvet front and neck facing together. I machine sew the cotton hem facing together. I pin the cotton hem facing all along the bottom of the skirt. I machine sew the hem facing to the bottom of the skirt. I press a half inch up for the hem facing. I press the hem seam down. and I press the facing up and flat along the skirt hem. I pin the facing to the skirt hem. I hand sew the facing along the hem using a tiny whip stitch. I hand sew a piece of cotton along the inside waist to hide the lining raw edges. I wanted a stand up collar piece to add to the neck. I measured and cut velvet and some canvas interlining to help it stand up better. I pinned the velvet collar pieces to the canvas pieces. I basted those in place. I pin and machine sew the collar pieces together, leaving the bottom open for turning. I clip curves and turn the collar right side out.
I press the color flat. I pinned the collar to the neck of my gown. I pin and machine sew the front facing piece. I machine sew around the neck with the collar sandwiched in between the gown and the facing. I press the front facing seam flat. I fold in the front facing and press. I fold in and pin the front facing piece in place. I hand sew the facing in place using a small invisible whip stitch. I pin the pocket under the side facing. It just barely fits, but this will keep my pockets from flapping around and showing. I machine sew two rows of gathering stitches to the top and bottom of my velvet puffed sleeve pieces. I gather and pin the bottom of my velvet puffed sleeve pieces to my cotton sleeve lining. You can see I'm shortening the lining a bit at the same time.
I machine sew the sleeve seam. I machine top stitch along the lining edge of the sleeve seam. I pin and machine sew the sleeve seam up along the lining and velvet outer sleeve. I fold the velvet outer sleeve and mark the halfway point. I fold the right side out and pin to the top of the sleeve lining. I pin the sleeve into the armhole of my wrapper gown, matching up seams and marks. I have gathering threads along the top of the velvet sleeve and the sleeve lining. I gather these, line them up with the armhole, and pin in place. I machine sew the sleeve into the armhole from the inside. I run a second row of machine stitches along the armhole for extra stability.
I remove basting stitches from the armhole and cut down the seam. I hand whip stitch the edge of the armhole to finish the raw edges using doubled thread. And there we go, my completed late Victorian wrapper or tea gown. Thank you for joining me today as I made my late Victorian wrapper or tea gown for the Welsh Weekend Historical Loungewear Evening. I had great fun swanning around in the gown. It turned out exactly as I hoped. I'll have videos of making the nightgown and the accessories for the weekend as well. Stay tuned for those! If you liked this video and want to see more sewing and costume videos, remember to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Happy sewing! Come on! There's a spot. There we go. Oh my goodness. Okay. There we go. <laughs> oh, here. You got a better spot there? Okay. Okay. Here. There. How about that? Did that posted stamp good enough for you? Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, hi, girls. Oh. He's a good girl. Can I get up? Can I get up? Ooh. Ooh.